In this video, I'm going to cover how to build your own Plex server. If you have a home theater, there are a number of different media storage devices and software available. But to be completely transparent and upfront, I've never used any other solution. When I began, I reviewed all the options and settled on Plex. I think originally I purchased a lifetime pass when it was around $87. I know it's more now, but I would buy it again at the current price without hesitation. I'd highly recommend buying a lifetime pass if it's available because you never know when the prices are going to go up in the future. I've been so impressed with all the features, reliability, and ease of use, I've never had the need to switch to something else. Plex is a great way to organize, stream your personal collection of movies, TV shows, music, and photos anywhere on all your devices. In the beginning, I was using a Mac Pro server to host Plex. This was a great system and very reliable. I recently decided that it would be best to have my Plex server running on Windows because most of the other systems I use are Windows based. It would make things a little easier. And this gave me the opportunity to go through the process again and show you how it's done. First, let's talk about the hardware. I'm currently using an HP workstation called a Z620. This is a desktop server, more or less. Unless you want to invest in a network attached storage, this is one of the best ways to have an all-inclusive system because of the drive bay configuration. This system will allow you to connect up to eight hard drives internally. It's an older system, but I have three four terabyte hard drives giving me 12 terabyte of total storage space. I use this configuration specifically because it's cheaper to buy three four terabyte internal drives and matching external drives for backup. The main hard drive is an SSD. This is what's running the operating system and the server. The storage drives are configured as dynamic disks to take it full advantage of the full hard drive. This separation is key in being able to manage the system. Regardless, you don't have to have a complicated system. You can just use a PC and an external hard drive or an internal hard drive to store the movies. Now, let's get down to building your Plex server. First, you need to download the Plex software from Plex.tv. You can always Google download Plex media server. You'll want to download the recommended 64-bit version. This is available for PC or Mac. Simply run the install program and let that finish. Click finish after the install is done. Go ahead and right click the Plex icon in the bottom right hand tray, then select Open Plex. You will need to log in. I'll leave that up to you to choose how you want to log in. Plex Media Server is free to use, but there are premium features and outside access that are only available to pass holders, or in other words, paid accounts. Once you have accounts set up and log in, you'll be given the option to select your user profile. The one with the crown should be your administrator account. The server will initialize and on the next screen you can select Got It. Then type the name to identify your Plex server. Here you can also select to allow access from outside of your home. This will configure the computer but you'll still need to configure your network router. See my other video on how to set up outside access to Plex. Click Next. On this screen you can click Add Library but it's not necessary. We can do this later so just click Next. The server is now up and running. This window just lets you know you can get apps to run Plex on your other devices. Click Done. Here on the left side of the screen are the default options. You'll want to select More. On this screen you'll see your Plex server. Click on the plus symbol to add a library. A library is simply a folder on your computer that contains movie files, TV files, music files, or video files of all the supported formats. For the purpose of this demonstration, I've already have all of my folders set up with all the media in them. Now I'll connect Plex Server to each one of them by choosing the library types such as movies. I'll click Add Folder, Browse for Media Folder, select the hard drive and folder on the hard drive, then click Add. Here you can see the directory or path to the folder that you have just added. Select Type again. Under Name, give your library a corresponding name. I specifically name each folder what I want it to be called in Plex to make things simple. And finally, click Add Library. The server will go to work finding all the media in that folder, adding it to your dashboard along with the movie covers and other information. You'll then go back to the plus symbol next to your Plex server name on the left hand side and repeat the same steps for each folder you want to add as a library to your Plex server. The movies and other media will continue to populate over time. 
After you've created a library, you can always go back to that library on the left hand side and click on the three dots, then select Manage Library and Edit. You can add multiple folders or directories from different hard drives to the same library so they are displayed together on your dashboard in Plex. After you've selected and added all of your libraries, you'll notice in the top right hand corner the activity symbol spinning around. If you hover over it, you'll notice the processes that Plex is doing in the background. Plex has the ability to identify movies and TVs, intros and credits, giving you the option to skip them. It also collects all the metadata re related to those movies and programs. You can always delete a library and re-add it. Plex will go out and rescan and add the information again. After configuring the libraries, Plex is now adding all of my movie content to this new Plex server. Because I have so many movies and files for Plex to scan and add to its database, the computer will be under a high load for about 24 to 48 hours. I can check the status and know when all the tasks are completed and the server is not being taxed anymore. At that point, it's ready to use. If you have the Plex app on your Apple TV or other devices, it will automatically look for servers on your network so you can use them. I hope this will help you to enjoy Plex as much as I have. Be sure to watch my other videos on tips and tricks in configuring your Plex server, and be sure to like and subscribe.